So you have a Google account and you're using ChatGPT. Why are you doing that for? You're missing out on an AI powerhouse that's built directly into your Google account. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Gemini, how to access it, how to use it, and how it's integrated into Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, Google Tasks, and many other Google services. It's right there and you can use it. And because it knows more about you than ChatGPT, you can leverage it in so many different ways to get much better answers. Keep watching to the end, and if you've got a certain type of Google account, you've actually got Gemini Pro included. That's not the free version, that's the premium version, and I'm gonna show you how you access it. So to get started with Gemini, you need to head over to gemini.google.com, this web address here. Once you're there, you'll see this page appear, and it's very similar to ChatGPT in its layout. You've got your main prompt box down at the bottom. You've got the models that you can flick between in the top left-hand corner, and you've got this menu on the left-hand side which shows you your past conversations you've had if you want to re-access them, and you've also got your settings and help down the bottom. Now, before you start doing any of this, do click on the settings and then click on apps because this is where you need to go to link in your Google Workspace apps. So once you're on here, make sure you've got this switch toggled on. Once that switch is toggled on, it means that Gemini can now access your Gmail, your Google Calendar, your Google Docs, your Google Drive, and your Google Keep and Google Tasks, so it can interact with those services. So once that's done, just head back over to Gemini and you can start using it. Now, one thing I do recommend doing is clicking on the model and making sure that you've got 2.5 Pro selected. Now, it may not say 2.5 because that model number changes all the time. Just make sure you've got the Pro selected. It does mean it's gonna be a bit slower, but you're gonna get better responses back to your queries, especially when you're interacting with the other Google Workspace services that you've just given it access to. So I'm gonna show you straight away how to get Gemini to go into your Google services and give you answers back. So when you're in the prompt box, you have a special command, it's the at symbol. So if you do the at symbol, you can then select the service that your prompt is gonna be related to. So in this case, I'm gonna do one for Gmail, and I'm gonna ask it to go into my Gmail inbox and look through the emails I've had from the last two weeks and find any emails that need a reply that I've missed. So let me just paste my prompt into there. Are there any emails in the last two weeks that I've missed that I probably should reply to? I'm gonna hit send. That's now gonna go through to Gemini and you'll see here it's now doing its thinking and it will connect to Google Workspace and come back. So here it's connected to Google Workspace and it'll be going into my Gmail and it's gonna be looking through my inbox and hopefully find some emails in there that I haven't replied to. Well, hopefully it won't, but actually it has. I have missed an email. So here we go. Yes, I have got one that I should do. So that got received on Sunday, June the 8th. Um, and it's about a training session for next week. So I probably should reply back to that. Um, the nice cool thing here is you can click on this icon here and it will show you the email that it came from. So you've got the, the name of the email. You can also click on the sources on the left hand side here or just below the, um, the response and the email if I hover over there is highlighted on the right hand side so I can click on that and that will open my Gmail inbox directly on that email so I can action it straight away. That's something that ChatGPT cannot do for you and that's one of the unique feature that you get with Gemini. Another example is if you're a fan of Google Tasks like I am. So you can set a task in here very quickly by just doing the, the at symbol again, selecting Google Tasks. I'm going to paste in my um, prompt and this one is just to remind me to call the accountant at 4 p.m. And with this one, all I need to do is hit send, and that's gonna to add to my Google Tasks. So if you've got the Google Tasks app on your phone, or you use Google Tasks on your desktop, that task is now there, and that's gonna fire a notification for me at 4 p.m. to uh, call the accountant, and I can tick it off once I've done it. Now, what I've shown you so far, you might think that's kind of simple, it's cool, and it connects to all your services, but it's kind of simple. So let's do a bit more of a detailed prompt. So you'll notice down at the bottom in the prompt box, let me just start a new chat quickly. Um, you'll see that down at the bottom in the prompt box, You've got two options here. You've got deep research and canvas. There's a difference between these two. So deep research is gonna go out onto the internet and do some, as it says, deep research. It's gonna look through many, many websites and come back and build a report for you. So I've got a prompt here. I've made up a, a Coca-Cola company called Panda Cola uh, that wants to launch in the UK and it wants to target Gen Z. Uh, but we want to we're telling the prompt also that we're aware that virgin cola tried to do something similar to this back in the 90s and it failed and we don't want to fall into the same pitfalls so with this one i'm going to click deep research and i'm going to send it to um uh, gemini by hitting the send button now this is going to take a while to come back with something but i'm just going to show you the first steps of this process so at the moment it's thinking about what it needs to do to do research this project for me and once it's done that it's going to come back with the steps it's going to follow you can alter those steps if you want to um, I generally don't alter the steps because it seems to be pretty good at it. So in a few seconds, this should hopefully appear on the screen. So here we go. Here's the research plan that it's come with. Like I said, you can edit the plan by clicking on that, or you can just hit start research. So I'm just going to click start research on this case. And what it's going to do now, it's going to go out onto the internet. And it's going to find lots of sources 
and it's going to create this document uh, for me that I can put into Google Docs and I can share with my team. As you can see, it's starting its research. It should list some stuff here. I don't know how long it's going to do it, but it's showing its thinking and its understanding of my prompt, which is going through these steps. And now it's all these websites it's looking through uh, to research and build this uh, report for me. Now this report can take quite a bit of time to do, so we'll come back to this one a bit later on in the video to see how it's got on. So next, I want to show you a feature in Gemini called Canvas that you've seen down at the bottom here. Now Canvas is sort of very, very cool. You know how you use a Google Doc to create a doc and then you invite your friends and teammates into it to uh, make edits and suggestions? Well, this is if you haven't got any friends or teammates, you can use Canvas and use Gemini to uh, work with you as a friend, as a teammate. So I'm just gonna put a prompt into this box here and I'm gonna select Canvas and I'm gonna send it. I will just before we get send that, I'll just tell you what the uh, blog post is about. It's about micro machines. I don't know if any of you remember micro machines. I've got a collection of micro machines. So uh, from when I was a kid and I just like them and I've kept hold of them because they look cool. Uh, but they used to be a really popular toy in the UK and I think globally, but they kind of vanished now. You don't see them anywhere. So I'm asking it to find out why they vanished or if they are still popular everywhere. And if you ever saw the adverts, the world's fastest man, talking man doing the voiceover, and you know, he'd say like a couple of sentences in like under 10 seconds and stuff like that. I don't know what's happened to him, so I'm gonna ask him to ask uh, Gemini to look into that as well for this blog post that we're going to write about micro machines. So let's hit the send button. So that's going into it for Canvas and the screen should expand in a few seconds and we'll see the Google Doc down the right hand side and what uh, Gemini has put in there. So here we go. It's now come back. It's, as you can see on the right hand side, it's opened up like a Google Doc inside um, Gemini, which is called the Canvas, and it's starting to produce the post. Now, as you can see, this has done a typical AI post. It's just done bullet points throughout. I don't want that. So I'm going to ask it to redo it and say, let's you know, make this into a blog post, add, add some um, paragraphs to it, make it, make it nice. So there we go. I've put my prompt in to tell it to change it. Let's send that through and you'll see that this document on the right hand side should be rewritten by Gemini into a more of a blog format rather than just a list. It takes a few seconds for it to do its thinking and then it should start updating all this. So here we go. It's just updating now and you can see it changed that previous content it gave me that was mainly bullet points now into a nicely formatted blog post, which is really handy. Now, while you're inside Canvas, there's tons of stuff you can do to work with Gemini to make this blog post more interesting and maybe de-AI it. So it doesn't sound as much as it's written up by an AI and you can tell people that you did it. You can hover over paragraphs and on specific paragraphs, you can then give it more detail that you want included in this paragraph. Or maybe you want to change the tone or the style of the paragraph. Or maybe you just want to add some stuff. You can click anywhere in here and you can start typing just like a Google Doc. You'll notice when I hovered over a paragraph uh, that this box appears and this is where you can put specific commands in related to the text that you have covered. So I've noticed here that it's used the US spelling. So I'm just gonna say, um, change this to the UK spelling of, uh, of words. So change this to UK English and hit enter. And that's now going to update that paragraph and you'll see the word deportized here. That should change to an S rather than a Z, which is the correct way of spelling it. There you go, that has updated that part there. Now, if I hover over another part of this uh, blog post, I like the paragraph below, I could, you'll see on the right hand side that these options appear and you can change the length of a paragraph or text by clicking on there and you just have this slider that you can go up and down so you can make it shorter, very short, longer or very long. You can also have a couple of more options. So you've got this option here to change the tone and you've got this option to suggest edits. So if I click on suggest edits on the left hand side, Gemini is now going to think about it and it's going to come back with potential suggestions of how we can change this paragraph. Now you can see that Gemini has come back with suggest edits. So just like a Google Doc, it's left comments above it. So it's highlighting uh, bits of text that it thinks can be changed. This is essentially, it's critiquing itself. If you were to manually type some stuff into this document, you could get Gemini to critique what you've put in there and it will come back with suggestions and you have an option to hit apply all um, or you can apply individual options as well by hovering over them and hitting apply. Gemini will then go and make that change that is suggested to the uh, document. So this is really like, um, as I said, if you've got no friends or no one on your team who wants to give you any suggestions, you can use Gemini to do so. And then you've got other things that you can do as well. So um, I'm just going to hit apply all on this actually just to get those all off screen, all those suggestions so that we can go back to the a nice clean document without the orange highlighting all over it. We'll give that a few seconds to do what it needs to do. There you go. So it's made all those changes. Now, what I was going to say is there's something else you can do with this. So now you've got the blog post here. Maybe you've got a newsletter and you'd like to send out a version of this to the newsletter. So what I've put in here at the bottom in this prompt is I've asked it to insert at the bottom of this document, a condensed newsletter version to entice readers of the newsletter to 
come through and read the full blog post. Even though I spelled enticing correctly, Gemini has noticed that, has understood what I want to write. So there we go. If you look on the right hand side, you'll see it in blue. This is the new stuff it's put in there. And this is for my newsletter. So it's given me a headline and it's given me a bit of a condensed stuff on micro machines. And then it's brought a link here that people can click on to to go through and read the full blog post. So as you can see, you can do so much stuff with Gemini and Canvas. And once you're happy with it, what you can do is click on the drop down here, the three little share and export and click on export to docs. As soon as you click on that, it's going to take what you've just created in Canvas into a Google Doc where you can do further edits. And if you do have team members and stuff like that, that you want to share it with before you go ahead with it, you can do so. So there you go. That is that canvas now inside a Google Doc, which you can share with your team or whoever before you send it out or before you publish your blog post to get some human feedback on it. So we're back in Canvas. In the top right hand corner, you might notice this blue button called Create. If you click on that, it gives you some options. So whatever you've composed with Canvas, you can have it, Gemini turn it into a web page for you, into an infographic, into a quiz or an audio overview. You can also describe your own app. You can have it changed into an app. It's really kind of powerful. You could say, for example, have a, uh, ask it to create a game where little cars drive around a, a city or stuff like that, and it will do it for you. It'll give you the code and all that kind of stuff. Gemini is probably the best app when it comes down to generating code, but that might be a bit too complex for what we want to do. And it's uh, not really something I'm going to cover much in this video, but I would recommend the quiz and the audio overview. They're kind of handy. Uh, quiz, if you're essentially studying something and you just want to make sure you know it. And uh, audio overview, what will happen is it will create a an audio overview in an MP3 format that you can listen to. And it's two hosts talking about what you have composed there. It's really handy if you're going into the car and you just want to have a, a quick listen back of what you've done. And uh, it's there for you to use. So let's take a quick look at the deep research now. It has come back. And let's see what it's like. You can see on the left-hand side, it's put a blue little um, orb next to it. That means something new has happened to one of your chats. So let's click on that and see how Panda Cola is doing. So here we go. This is the deep research that it's done. And this is the executive summary and overview. And you can see that is pretty damn detailed about how we can make this Panda Cola company and hopefully be a success. So if we scroll down, you'll see all the information it puts into tables. It's looked into tons of stuff. So we've got a bit here I can see about Virgin Cola's failure. Um, and uh, how to avoid that. And if you go right down to the bottom of this document, it will actually show you all the sources it got the information from. Uh, and at any point, you can actually click on these drop down arrows here to learn more about uh, stuck in the document to see where it sourced that information from. So you can always verify what it's saying to you is true. Scroll down right to the bottom and it should list all the sources it got it from. So it got all this from these websites, also YouTube videos I can see here and that's all being created. And well, what we can do now is in the top right, we can hit the export button and that will export it to Google Docs. So if you wanna share this with other people in your team, you can do so. Uh, you've also got the create button in the top right hand corner, which will allow you to turn this into a web page, into an infographic, into a quiz or an audio overview. Audio overviews are really handy for these deep research things, because you can see how long that document is. It's gonna take ages to read that. It's almost like you need to ask Gemini to summarize its own work again, turn to a small amount. That's what an audio overview will essentially do for you. If you click on that, it's gonna create an MP3 format, did file for you, of two hosts discussing what's in this document. So once you've created your deep research and you've got this document, what I tend to do is I create an MP3 of it, because you've got Gemini on your mobile phone and all these conversations are synchronized between the two. Um, I can get it on my mobile phone, I can hit the play button, while I'm in the car and I can listen to the audio overview. So that's what the audio overview is really handy for, especially for these long deep research uh, projects where you want to get a, a gist of what's been said and what this document contains rather than having to read the whole thing because it will take you a long time. So I'd recommend giving the audio overviews a try. They do take a while to set. Once I click that button, it could take anywhere up to 10 minutes before I get the audio overview back. But of course, like I said before, on the conversation on the left-hand side, a blue orb will appear once it's been updated so it stands out so I can see it and then I can go in and listen to that audio overview. The final thing in Gemini is gems. So you'll see on the left hand side navigation there's a thing called explore gems. So what gems are, are they like pre-written prompts and these prompts run before the prompt that you've typed into the prompt box runs. There's some pre-made ones here from Google. So you've got a brainstormer, a coding partner, a copy creator and more. But you can also create your own gems. So if you click on new gem, you can give it a name. So for example, I'm going to create one that's, uh, um, what, what do we all hate? We all hate printers. 
So I'm going to put one in there that helps us solve problems with printers. Okay, so I've created a printer technician gem. I've given it a prompt and I've actually uploaded the manual to the printer we have so that it's got a bit more information, a bit knowledge. One thing I want to do before I hit uh, save to save this gem I've created, there's an option down here to get Gemini to rewrite what you've given as a more detailed prompt. It's worth doing this, especially if prompting isn't really your thing. So I'm going to click on that icon now and it's going to rewrite, Gemini's going to rewrite what I put in there about that we mainly have HP printers and I need you to help fix problems with them and as you can see it's come back now for far more detailed prompt and all I've got to do is hit save you can do a test as well before you do it just to make sure that it's working but I'm just gonna hit save and hit start chat so now I've got this gem I can say help the printers jammed again so there we go help the printers jammed again going to send that through and our printer technician is going to look through that manual that I uploaded and it's also going to do its own thinking and come back with suggestions on how I can fix the printer and here it's come back with suggestions and I can follow those and see if they work and I can continue the conversation with the printer technician if it doesn't work. Now the one thing with gems are at the moment you can't share them out with other people which is a bit of a nuisance. I'd love to be able to create a gem and share it out with the rest of our company so I know that everyone's using the same prompt that I've created and that everyone's got access to the same gem. At the moment you can't do that so everyone has to create their own gems manually which is a bit of a nuisance. I'm hoping that feature will come to Google Workspace soon. Fingers crossed on that. You can see gems are really handy for specific things that you want to have a prompt about. Just like in ChatGPT you can do that in Gemini. So that's a quick and basic overview using Gemini and why you should use it compared to ChatGPT. Now don't forget if you've got a special type of Google account, a Google Workspace account, you've got Gemini included and it has the pro version on here which is the premium model. That's the latest model from uh, Google and it's the best one to use. So you don't need to pay for ChatGPT because you've got it all in Gemini and it is part of your Google Workspace subscription. So get on it and start using Gemini. Forget about ChatGPT. I know it's the household name and that's what everyone wants to use, but Gemini is there. And if you look at all the leaderboards, it's actually better than ChatGPT and it has been for quite a few months now. So if you've got Google Workspace, get to Gemini.google.com and start using it.